What's going on YouTube? I'm Robert Hall and today I'm going to show you a modifier that I just found that I wish I'd had for a long time. Before we get into today's video, consider joining my photography gear chat group on Facebook where you can discuss gear with me and thousands of other photographers. The link is in the description below. So I've been in love with my MagMod equipment. I've got everything that they make, the MagGrid, MagSphere, MagBounce, MagSnoot, all the color cutout gels, the MagBeam. I've got everything that they make and I love using them. Especially for my speed lights, I've pretty much got a point in the day where I like to use all of these products. I just love the incremental control that you can achieve using these and I love that you can use them in combination with their gels or with each other to create really unique effects. And I like it so much that once I actually break out my Explore and I'm using a omnidirectional bulb again, I kind of miss this experience. So I do have honeycomb grids. Now one of the things I don't like about using honeycomb grids is having to adjust your light light back and forth a lot or picking different grids in order to get the shape you want from your light. And that's where this thing comes in. This is from Impact. It is a Bones S-mount Fresnel head adjustable spotlight. That's the action right there. So we can mount this on the Explorer and it's going to provide a 10 degree to 40 degree spread of light. Now this is with the Explorer's LED panel, which is not a great representation of how an omnidirectional bulb will come through, but just so you guys can see it live, this allows you to widen or narrow the light coming through. And it goes from 40 degrees all the way down to 10 degrees, so you can get a really tight pattern of light when you extend it all the way. Now this Fresnel pattern that you see on the front is the same type of pattern that you're gonna find on both the mag beam or just the head of any speed light. It's that pattern that allows the light to concentrate into a specific area. So the act of having that type of head move away from your light source while being restricted is what gives it that really tight pattern of light. This is great because you can put your light in one position and then modify how tight of a pattern you want once it's in that spot. So now I'm going to show you guys how this looks on a mannequin head so you can see the zoomable properties and what you can expect that to do to the light on your subject. For this portion I'll be putting it on an SLB 60 watt LED. So right here we've got the light roughly 4 feet away. The modifier is in its most compact configuration, it's at its 40 degree point. Even then it's a very tight pattern that lets you be highly controlled at where you're positioning the light. And then steadily as we zoom it in you can see that it's narrowing on the chest of the mannequin and then zooming all that light, concentrating it into a little bit of a hot spot on the face of the subject. You can also see how the shadow behaves as a result. It's really nice to be able to move that light right into a position that you want to highlight without the use of flags. This would be killer as a background light. Right now it's still in front of the subject, but we're putting that spotlight effect behind the subject. So it gives you a ton of control that you really don't have with softer modifiers. You can use this to get some really nice patterns of light, really pinpoint a particular aspect of a subject, and still get some nice transition properties. I just want to share this with you guys because to me it's far better to have this than have a bunch of different honeycomb grids, and I just thought it was a really unique tool. Again, it's called the Impact Fresnel Spot. 10 to 40 degrees. Of course, I've got a link in the description if you guys want to order one yourself. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. Feel free to put any questions in the comments and until next time, keep on shooting YouTube. <laughs>